So when I asked you yesterday, Meme, uh, I think I asked you if you had a religious background. You said no. And I was curious, have you ever heard of something called the gospel? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Have you, I mean, have you ever heard of God? Yes. Okay. Uh-oh, something's eating on my base. Mole rat. Ate my fusion uh, generator. Where is your base? Back in Flatwoods. Oh, okay. Is this one back in mine? Now, are you, do you go to public school, or have you been... It sounds like you go to public school, right? Uh, well, I go to, I go to ALA. It's a, uh, it's called, it's American Leadership Academy. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, do they teach you at all about God there, or do they think God doesn't exist? Uh, they really try to stay off the top of the religion. Oh, they don't talk about it at all? Okay. So, how about you? Do you believe God exists? Well, I mean, I'm kind of at a split more. Kind of at a split. What's your split? Like, I feel like some is, 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 Did you actually finish your statement or were you, you kind of, you're lost in thought? Yeah, it's just kind of lost in thought that point. So it's good to think about why you're here, kind of what what life's about, kind of the bigger questions, and what's going to happen when you die. You know, nobody wants to die, but we all know it's going to happen someday, right? It's eventual. Yep. Exactly. So where do you go when you die? They're the they're the big questions of life, and the thing you got to wonder is. Can you answer those questions without having an understanding of who God is? Because without God, then there's not really any answers. But with God, then you can seek answers. Okay, I need a right leg for you. So I'm almost done here. I'm just making you a right leg. No, not a level one. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to find a spot real quick to put down my camp, and uh, Dragon took, uh, took the spot where I had set it. No, he won't take it. Oh, uh, no, it, it's gone. This house is in its place, but it's fine. I just need to re relocate it. You had the perfect spot picked out, and Dragon took it, huh? Yep, it's fine, though. Well, he's had your back the whole way, so I don't think you can uh, be too upset about it. All right, so I've got your gear here. I've got a painted metal trying... chest piece for you, level 10, damage 35, and then a bunch I'm of pocketed leather. Now, one of the items that you have... Ah, protect one. Can you jump to the base here so I can give you, um, give you your armor so it doesn't disappear? Uh, yeah, I just I always want to eat uh, my generator. On. I don't understand why. Oh, yes, I can finally place it here. But I'm in the water. That's not good. That's... Come on, hold. Um. Oh, yeah. I'm down the river. Um. Okay, can I place my house somewhere? Dang it. Um. Nope, that's in the water. <laughs> Go ahead and jump over here so I can give you your armor. I'm going to have to get going here in a minute, so. Okay. I'll, I'll just move my house somewhere else. Are you kidding me? I'm out of wood. <sighs> All right, I'll just stick it up here for right now. I could try to put my house in the desert, too. Yeah, you could do that. Okay, it's ugly, okay, I know, but it's a temporary thing. I'm back in Flatwoods at my camp. Okay. 
I mean, almost fits on there. Just barely. There we go. It's not too bad. I'll take it. I could probably build my house up by that lighthouse. Yeah, you could do that too. But I'm gonna try to build it in the desert so it's kind of like an outpost sort of thing. But first, I should probably put turrets up in it. So one of the things to kind of do as an intellectual exercise... Where you at? Looks like you're right there. Okay, come over here, me. Over here. Hold up, real quick. No worries. It's right to the left of the box here. Now, go ahead and grab all the pieces you want, but that one piece that's chameleon, right here. Right here in the bag. This by the bag? box. Yep. Um, the one... The one piece that gives you your, you see in the bag? Can I just take it all? Take it all, it's all yours. There you go. Oh, and also I gotta, I gotta drink the water. Yeah, make sure you drink some water. So, one of the things to think about when you think about if there's a God and you're thinking about, well, how do I know there's a God? When you look at a painting, you know there's a painter, right? Why? Well, because there's a painting. A painting lets you know that somebody painted it. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. So if you think about a building, it lets you know that there's a builder. A building does, doesn't happen by accident. So if you see a building, you know there had to be a builder. Make sense too? Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about, we live in a creation. So if there's a creation, there must be a creator. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now the question is, if there is a creator, which I think we pretty firmly established there is, who is the creator? And that's a very important question. Now, if we're in a world like this as we look around and we're in this virtual world if all we had like let's say you never bought the game you just woke up and you're in here and you're like wait a minute where am I at what is this world would you be able to know who built it by looking at the world from the inside hmm Probably not, right? There's no real way for you to know on your own. You can look around and go, somebody must have made this world because the world exists, but I don't know who it is. Unless the person who made the world tells you. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. So if you think about Fallout, for example, there's an about page you can get to in the settings and you can look at it and look and it'll say Bethesda made this game and it will tell you about it. Uh, quick question. What does it mean when Tall Armor is going to be recalled? It means it just puts it in your stash. It's a good thing. It's not bad at all. Oh, okay. It's all good. I'm going to come over here and sit down. So, so as, you're, right. as you're looking at the world and you're wondering who made it, one of the things to realize is if we look at ourselves and at the world directly, we can know some things about the person who made it, but we're not actually going to be able to know who made it because we can't find it out from looking internally. But if the person who makes the world tells us who it is, then we should be able to trust that. Now, I asked you earlier if you had a Bible and you said no, right? You've never read the Bible? I have not read the Bible. Okay. Well, the Bible is a set of letters that were created after people were told by the Creator what this is all about. He explained why He created you, why He created me, why He created this whole creation, and what's going on with it. Have you ever looked at the world and thought, you know... There's a lot of bad stuff that goes on here. Have you ever thought that? 
Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really seem right, does it? The reason is, is because we live in a world that is full of something called sin. Have you ever heard of sin before? Uh, I believe so, yeah. What do you know sin to be? What is it? Uh, isn't it almost like something that basically like goes against something like in the Bible? That's a good way to say it. Sin at its root is when you do something that's against God's law. So maybe, have you ever told a lie in your life? Mm. Okay, that's called lying. And God said, for example, we shouldn't lie. Have you ever taken something in your life, even if it was small, even if it didn't cost much? No. Have you done that? No. You've never taken anything before? Something that didn't belong to you? Never. Never. Okay, well that's good. Have you ever, um, it's called using the Lord's name in vain, have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? Mm. Said OMG or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. That's called blasphemy. So these are things that we do that God has told us not to do. And there's ten of them. And they're, don't lie, don't steal, don't covet. Covet is wanting something else that somebody has. And any time that we do something that is against God's law, we kind of know we're doing it. We know we shouldn't lie. We know we shouldn't steal. We know we shouldn't use his name as a cuss word. We know it, but we still do it. That part of you that tells you when you lie that you're doing something wrong, That's actually a gift from God called your conscience. Human beings are the only creatures that have a conscience. And it's something that God put in you so you would know that you're doing something wrong. Does that make sense? Have you ever felt bad when you've done something and thought, you know, I really probably shouldn't have done that? Yeah. Have you ever heard of the word your conscience before? Yep. So your conscience convicts you of sin. And what's happening right now is you're living in a world that is dying because of all the sin in it. Sin causes us to have something called a punishment coming. And we have to pay for our sins. And one of the things that happens is we're going to have to die. And that's not the way the world was originally designed. See, when God first designed the world, everybody was going to live forever. But then some people disobeyed God and sin happened and through sin, death entered the world. Are you with me so far? Yep. Okay. So someday, each one of us is going to die. And after that death, we're going to have to stand in front of God and He's going to look at our whole life and He's going to look at everything we've ever said, everything we've ever done, and everything we've even ever thought, the deepest down thoughts in our heart, some pretty bad stuff there sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. When that happens, God is going to judge us, and He's going to find us guilty of breaking His laws, and the punishment for being guilty is a place called hell. It's a very terrible place, not fun at all, and you have to stay there forever. It's pretty bad. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah. That's called the bad news. Okay? The gospel was something I asked you about earlier if you've ever heard of it. The gospel is called the good news. But you really don't understand why you need good news until you understand what the bad news is. The bad news that I just explained to you has a solution. See, it's no way for us to solve it. It's going to happen no matter what we do. But God himself made a way that we can be forgiven for our sins against him. Have you ever heard of somebody named Jesus Christ? Yes. What do you know about him? Okay. 
Do you understand that Jesus Christ was actually in it is actually God himself? Yes. Jesus Christ is God. He's all of God and God became a man. See, he was born of a virgin and he lived a perfect life. This is 2000 years ago it happened, but it's a fact. And in that 2,000 years ago, he lived about 30 years. He never sinned once. He lived a perfect life. And then he got tried and put on a cross to die because he said he was God. And the people at the time who he said that to, they were very angry because he was causing them troubles. They were called the Jewish Pharisees. And they worked together with the Romans to have him killed on something called a cross. It was a very horrible way to die. He didn't just die on that cross. He did something for us. He Remember that, that, ha, that um, punishment of having to go into hell? Yes. That's called the wrath of God. He actually took the wrath of God for all of the sins that you've ever done and all of the sins that you ever will do and all of the sins that I've ever done and all of the sins I ever will do. He took that wrath on the cross for us and as you said, he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then three days later to prove that he was who he said he was, that he actually was in fact God, he came back from the dead. The only man ever to do so. And he is actually alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father. And there's an opportunity for you, there's an offer for you, that you can give Jesus Christ your sins, and he is going to give you that righteous life you led. So that on the day that you die, instead of God seeing a guilty sinner that he must throw in hell, he sees the perfect life that his son led, and so that you can be welcomed into the kingdom of God as one of his family, one of his sons. That's the good news of the gospel. But there's two things that have to happen for that exchange to take place. You have to do something called repenting. And to repent is where you turn from your sins. You, it's something called forsaking them. You say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. And you turn towards God and you say, please help me. And you put all of your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in Him alone that He actually did what He said He did. That He did, in fact, pay for your sins. And because of that, you can be forgiven and you will be welcomed into heaven and you will actually live forever with Jesus Christ on a new earth, a new creation, and having all the wonderful time because there won't be any more sin in the world, which is really going to be amazing. Does that make sense, what I've told you so far? Yes. Have you ever heard that before? No. No. Okay. So, I want you to kind of think about it in another way. Imagine we're on an airplane, and the stewardess comes up and she says, in five minutes, meme, you're going to have to jump out of the airplane. You'd be pretty freaked out, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, but she says, hey, guess what? Even though the law of gravity would drag you to your death, here's a parachute for you. And she puts it in the seat next to you. And she says, this parachute will save you. With me so far? Yep. So now you have something that you need to do. You need to turn to the parachute. You need to repent. You need to turn to it. And then you need to trust the fact that it's going to save you. But here's the problem. If in five minutes later, you jump out the door, but the parachute's still sitting on the chair next to you, what do you think's going to happen? Splat. Exactly. Splat. So that's what is called repenting and putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You turn to the parachute and you actually put the parachute on. You put the righteousness and you put the truth of Jesus Christ on you, and that's what saves you from the laws you have broken with God, just like the parachute would save you from the laws of gravity. 
Does that make sense? Yes. So what are the two things that you would have to do to have the the uh, the knowledge, or to have salvation applied to you? For Jesus Christ to take your sins and give you his righteousness, what are the two things that you would have to do? Uh, repent. That's one. Think about the parachute. What do you have to do with the parachute? Uh, you have to what? Believe. That's part of it. You got to put it on. You got to trust it. You got to trust the parachute with your life. A lot of religions out there will at, will tell you that if you do something, you can earn the favor of God. Actually, that's what all the religions tell you. See, I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Six years ago, after living 40 years of my life in sin, six years ago, Jesus Christ saved me. And he did so by having somebody share the gospel with me and teaching me how I could repent and put my faith and trust in him. And because that person did it, I prayed to God. I turned from my sin, turned towards him, and I asked him to forgive me. And I put all my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And he saved me. He made me a new creation. He brought me from death to life. And he's given me new desires. And he's helped me now to come here to meet people like you who have never heard about him and about the good news of the gospel to be able to tell you about it. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Well, thank you for hearing me out. I really appreciate it. I know this is probably not quite what you thought you were going to have to hear today in Fallout. But I hope you understand I'm telling this to you because I care about you. And the last thing I want you to do is go to hell when you die. So I'm hopeful that you might think Attention about this. Citizens. Would you do that? Nuclear strike imminent. Because someday Please. there's not going to be death from above, but someday there's going to be real death that you have Thank to face. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you have any questions uh -oh. about... I know, it's a bomb. It's going to happen. Do you have any questions about the things that I've shared with you? Where is it going to hit? That's not what I asked you. I asked you if you had any questions about the things I've shared with you. Uh, no, not really. Okay.